My greatest fear is drowning at sea. I have nightmares of being underwater with nothing around me but water. For many years, my family took a cruise each Christmas. We often sailed aboard Carnival Cruise, which has beautiful ships out of Florida to the Bahamas, our favorite destination. We sailed other cruise lines that were unique ships to different destinations around Jamaica, Puerto Rico, and even St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. This chilling nightmare occurred on one of these cruises from Fort Lauderdale to St. Thomas. We were midway on our cruise when we anchored in St. Thomas. We arrived just after dark, and the lights of St. Thomas were beautiful off our port side. We entered the dining room with the best view of the harbor lights. We had a fabulous Caribbean-style dinner of rock lobster, and my favorite conch in a delicious rice dish. After dinner, my sister and I walked on the promenade deck that runs the ship's length outside. The air was warm and fresh, but the Christmas season still required a sweater at night. We started up on the bow and reenacted the scene from the Titanic, leaning out over the railing with our arms outstretched, letting the night air wash over us. It was a beautiful night with amazing stars above. I haven't seen so many stars as you see on a cruise ship. We finished our games of Titanic Adventurers and began strolling aft to the stern of the ship, letting our dinner digest. We were about two-thirds of the way to the stern rail when we heard these dreadful screams. No, Mom, no! My sister looked at me, and I looked at her in bewilderment. What on earth is going on? We ran to the stern where a woman held a child, maybe about age seven or eight, over the back of the railing. The child was screaming. Then the woman released her, and we heard her splash into the sea three decks below. The woman was laughing dementedly and waving. My sister and I were not sure what had just happened. We were so confused. Was this a game? The woman, in perhaps her late thirties, was nicely dressed in fashionable cruise wear. Her hair was brushed but a little blown in the sea air. She was beautiful except for the laugh. The laugh went the gambit from quietly demented to full-on hysterical. My sister and I looked over the rail where this crazy woman pointed. We could see in the black ocean water, just barely visible in the ship's lights, a child thrashing and trying to stay afloat while crying, Mommy! Mommy! My heart jumped in panic, and my sister turned and ran, screaming for help. The woman remained at the stern rail throwing kisses and saying, Goodbye, dear. Don't forget Mommy loves you. She then roared with laughter, and not a fun, happy laugh, but one that bit right to the bone. It was so strange, she was waving to the child as if she was sending her off on the school bus, and at the same time, laughing as the devil himself. Mommy loves you. I was terrified and did not take my eyes off the child for an instant, as she drifted further from the ship. I was thinking to myself, this can't be real, this isn't happening. Seconds later, three loud blasts burst from the ship's horns, the signal for the man overboard. Crewmen were already racing to the stern with my sister behind them. One had a life preserver in his hand, and an orange life vest strapped around his body. I pointed to the child and said there she is. He didn't hesitate a second, but leaped over the rail and dropped in a splash in the ocean. The second crew member had a spotlight and lit the water. Somewhere aboard, a lifeboat was dropped into the water, and its engine could be heard coming fast. The rescue swimmer had the child in his arms. The deck was filling with passengers curious about what had happened. You could hear everyone saying, is someone overboard? Are they alive? I didn't see the rescue crew bring the child aboard, but the rumor was that she was safe with her father. Ship's security took the mother into custody, and a police boat came out from St. Thomas to take her to shore. Some passengers said the woman was telling everyone she passed, no more children for me. I'm a free woman, and she would cackle that demonic laugh. <laughs> See you later, alligator, I'm free. I don't know what happened to the woman, but she must have been committed, for she was insane. My grandfather invited our entire family on a cruise to celebrate Mari and his 50th wedding anniversary. Mari was my grandmother. It was my father, his brothers, mom, and aunt. With all the grandchildren, there were 10 of us for a three nights cruise from Miami to Bermuda and back to Miami. My sister and I had never been on a cruise before, nor were our cousins, so we were excited. I was the middle age wise at 12. My sister was the youngest at 10. Our cousins were 13 and 11. Since we all now lived in different parts of the country, we flew to Miami and met at the ship. We arrived first, so my sister and I explored the ship before everyone else arrived. It was a pretty big ship, but not one of the biggest. I think it had something like 1,000 staterooms, so about 2,000 passengers. There were 10 places to eat, three pools and whirlpools, a rock climbing wall, 
mini golf, a fitness center, an entertainment center like an arcade, and a massage spa. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Don't forget a casino. So we kids had a ton of things to do and ran wild around the ship. Grandpa, Mari, my dad and mom, and aunt and uncle mostly played gin, rummy, and mahjong, a favorite card game of Mari's. They thought we were responsible enough to stay out of trouble. The first two nights we swam, watched Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in the movie theater, and played video games in the arcade. It was on the third and last night that the scary event happened. The adults were playing cards after dinner, and we kids headed out to the upper deck just to watch the ship moving through the stars, which literally rained down on us like a magical world. We sat in the deck chairs and told scary stories, jokes, and stuff like that. Sometime around 11.30, we decided to go to the arcade. Now it's a little surprising with something like 2,000 people on board. We were the only people on the deck, which was like a ghost town. When we got to the arcade, we had it entirely to ourselves. There was just one lone figure sitting on one of the deck chairs near the railing. As we passed him, I saw it was a very skinny and tall man with stringy hair, wearing a coat and winter cap. I couldn't tell whether he was staring out to sea or asleep. It was too dark to see any other features, but he didn't look like the other passengers on the ship. We all felt a little uncomfortable walking past him. I was the last to walk past him, and I kept an eye on him the whole time, but he didn't move. As I passed him and breathed relief too soon, I heard him speak from behind me a second after. It wasn't like he spoke, it was more like he mumbled. I turned around, and he stood and walked in my direction. He was tall sitting in the chair, but when he stood up, he was taller than any man I've ever seen. He was ludicrously tall. He had to have been almost seven feet. I don't know how tall, just really tall. My heart pounded, and I was scared to death. My sister and cousins were already in the arcade, and the door had shut. I was staring at this creep by myself. As he got closer, he pulled his coat around his neck, which was super skinny, with a huge Adam's apple. When he was about five feet from me, he stopped, stooped over, took his hand out of his coat pocket, and in an outstretching arm held a voodoo doll. Do you want to buy this? He asked. I gasped, no, and turned and ran away. When I entered the arcade, everyone was already at a game. I chose Jurassic Park to play, and quickly forgot about my scary encounter. I wish the story had ended there, but it didn't. As I played the video game, I heard the door open and felt the sea air blow across me. I turned to look, and the creepy voodoo man walked in. I instantly went to everyone and said it's time to go. We went to the lounge, where the adults played cards, and chatted with them briefly. They then gave each of us a hug and a kiss and set off to bed. We went down to our stateroom, and the adults played card games. We returned to our room without seeing the creep from the deck, got into our PJs, and curled up on the bunks to sleep. It didn't take long, and all of us were sound asleep. But it's some time after one o'clock, my husband got up to use the toilet, and when he turned the light on, she screamed bloody murder. There in a chair sat the strange tall man. When she screamed, he stood up, and all of us were up. And I don't know how it happened, but he tripped on his own feet and fell into the bathroom. My older cousin slammed the door and placed the chair in front of it to barricade the monster in. Our parents, now in the cabin next to ours, heard the commotion and screams and raced over. We told them there was a scary man in the bathroom. They called ship security, who came and handcuffed the man. They placed him in a cell, especially for criminal behavior. It turned out the man was not a passenger on the manifest. They don't know how he got on board without being spotted, but he did. It was suspected that he had mental disorders when they attempted to question him. He was locked in the cell below deck for his and everyone's safety. When we arrived back at port, the police came aboard and took him away. I don't know about a jail or a mental hospital. How he managed to find our stateroom is a mystery. How he got into our room is my fault. I didn't lock the door. I'm an only child, and my parents are older, so they don't like active vacations, but more sightseeing and museums kind of stuff. Of course, I'm a kid who likes to play and wants more fun stuff. The compromise my parents came up with was a Disney cruise. We would depart from our home in New York City for a cruise along the East Coast to the maritime provinces of New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, Canada. We would make ports of call at Bar Harbor, Maine, St. John's, New Brunswick, and Halifax, Nova Scotia in Canada. They would visit all the museums and art galleries in each port, and I could join the kids' club for swimming, volleyball, rock climbing, and dance parties. On the first day of the cruise, I quickly changed into my swimsuit in our cabin and went to the kids' club to meet the other kids. The director met me at the door and welcomed me and said if I needed instruction in anything, she was there to help, otherwise make friends. 
She had a plan for various activities, and she said I'll be tired and happy at the end of the evening. So, welcome. It was around 8 o'clock when we finished the day, and because the ship was 90% old people, the restaurants and corridors were virtually empty, and that included my parents, who were, I'm sure, already in their PJs watching a movie from bed in the room. Our stateroom was on one of the lower levels without a balcony, and the ship was as big as a city, so I had a long way from the pool deck where the kids' club was the stateroom. It was a challenge as all the corridors on each of the 14 decks looked identical. After waiting for like 10 minutes for one of the four elevators, I got impatient and ran for the stairwell. As I ran down the steps, I heard a man's voice kinda <laughs> laughing, saying, are you trying to run away from me? I turned around, and a man who looked around 20 or 25 dressed in workman's clothes beamed a big smile at me. I was surprised and unsure how to act, so I just gave him a smile back and turned to continue down the stairs. But he was so quick and moved past me, then blocked my descent, his arms on each of the stairwell railings. He looked up at me, still in my swimsuit, and hit me with a barrage of questions. What's your name? How old are you? Where are you from? Who are you traveling with? What deck are you on? He just kept asking but not giving me a chance to reply, and I wouldn't have even if he waited for an answer. I was frightened when he said, why are you so uncomfortable with me? I lied and said my dad was waiting for me. He expects to meet me as I come down. He took the elevator and I'm racing him, so please let me pass. Before he could move, I dashed under his arm and ran down the steps. The second night after kids club, I went to take the elevator, and there was the same man in the corridor. He grinned again when he spotted me, and very purposefully blocked my way. He began again with his questions, but they seemed even more personal this time, and he was saying things like, you have a beautiful smile, and I love your outfit, it is so cute. My alarm bells rang loudly in my head as he said, I'll walk you to your room, what floor are you on? I knew I had to get out of there fast, and at that moment, a couple walked up to the elevator that wasn't too far from where he was trapping me, and I yelled out, hold that elevator for me please, and I pushed right past him and joined the couple talking and laughing together. I think they were on a honeymoon. They didn't even notice me. When the elevator came, I got in with the honeymooners. The scary man was nowhere to be seen. When I got to the room, I told my mom what had happened, and from that time on, my dad walked me to and from kids club. My mom was determined to discover who this creep was, and we went to the photo studio that took the obligatory passenger photos. We looked at all the passenger photos and he wasn't among them. For the remainder of the trip, I never saw him again. It was as if he wasn't on the ship. What could have happened to me if I hadn't run away and dodged him with the couple in the elevator? I sometimes wonder if he was ever on the ship, or if it was just my imagination, since no one else ever saw him other than me.